is there Miriam in you or me? Let the Holy Spirit lead you. So we'll say a quick prayer before we get into the presentation. Most kind and ever loving Father, I want to thank you this morning for life, for giving all of us an opportunity to see another day. Lord, I ask humbly, dear Father, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to be on my tongue this morning, dear Father, that my words will not be mine, but it would be yours, and that everyone, including myself, will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we'll first start off by um, getting to know Miriam a bit. Now, we all know who Miriam is, but we get to understand Miriam a little better this morning. Who is Miriam? Miriam was the eldest of three children. So we have Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Miriam was from the line of Levi, but specifically, she was a Kohathite. Her grandfather was Kohath. Miriam was brave and responsible. Now, based on some research that I would have done, they said Miriam was about seven years old when her mother would have asked her to watch that basket along the Nile River. Now, my oldest son is seven years old, and I'm thinking to myself, can I entrust him with the responsibility of watching a baby in a basket go down a river? So Miriam had to be endowed with, with certain responsibility at a very young age and it showed that she would have been an obedient child because sometimes you tell children do x and they do y but miriam was obedient to her mother and she watched and she bravely watched that little basket down the river miriam was instrumental in moses meeting the pharaoh's daughter Pharaoh's daughter. Miriam, as I said, was very brave. Now, everyone know in those times, Pharaoh was God. So there would have been some sort of intimidation even speaking to Pharaoh's daughter. And Miriam did not back away from that, that, that intimidation, but she spoke to Pharaoh's daughter. When the basket would have reached and Pharaoh's daughter opened that basket and saw that child, she bravely asked, do you need a, there's a handmaid, one of the Hebrew women that I can bring to nurse that child. So it shows during Miriam's childhood that God would have used her in such a marvelous way to save the deliverer of his people. There's a quotation from Daughters of God, page 28, and Ellen White says, Miriam's force of character had been early displayed when as a child. She watched beside the Nile the little basket in which was hidden the infant Moses. Her self-control and tact, God had made instrumental in preserving the deliverer of his people. Now I can clearly see that my children, my sons, both seven and five years old, could be instrumental in God's work although they are young, because Miriam was very, very instrumental in Moses reaching to Pharaoh's daughter safely. Amen? Amen. What was Miriam's ministry like? Miriam was talented and gifted with music, poetry, and song. Exodus 15 to 20 says, and Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancings. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye the, to the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. Now, although God did not speak directly to Miriam in that Red Sea experience, we see how important praise and song is to worship. Miriam would have led the, woman in, the women in songs and praises to God. And 
we see that music plays a very, very important role in music, in, in ministry and in worship. Now, music was something that was not created on earth, but it was created in heaven. So it's a very, very integral part of worship. And it sees that, we see basically that Miriam's role in that Red Sea experience is very important and how important music is. Whether we have would have gone through our Red Sea experience or if we are currently going through a Red, X, Red Sea experience, music and song is important praise unto God. She was in favor with heaven. Ella White says in Daughters of God that Aaron and Miriam had occupied a position of high honor and leadership in Israel. Both were endowed with prophetic gifts and both had divinely associated with Moses in the deliverance of the Hebrews. I sent before them Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. So we clearly see that Miriam was blessed of heaven. God chose Miriam and Aaron and Moses to lead his people to deliver his people from Egypt. And although God um, would have called the three of them, three of them were given different responsibilities. And as women, we can see that we can be used in God's service, but at different capacities. Moses was chosen to lead and Aaron and Miriam were chosen to be support to Moses. And I think it was such a wonderful thing that God chose three siblings you know, it is as a blessing that siblings can work together in ministry. I would love for my sons to work together in ministry, even at this young tender age, for them to, you know, want to serve God together and want to accomplish things for heaven together. As a mother, that is, is such a wonderful um, thing to see. And I pray that God would give my sons the opportunity to do that as well. You know, she was blessed with prophetic gifts. You know, God would have spoken to her in visions and in dreams and would have given her certain messages for his people as well. But although Miriam would have had, you know, she had so many good traits that God could have used in his service, we are all not without fault. And Miriam is no exception. Miriam had failures that would have happened to her along the way, but God is not without mercy. So pride entered the heart of Miriam. Miriam, at some point in time in, in, in her, in that journey to Canaan, felt that she was equal to Moses. You know, Micah 6, 4 reminded us and said, I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. So at some point in time, that probably entered Miriam's mind that what called the three of us she's um she says in numbers 12 2 and they said had the lord had the lord indeed spoken only by moses had he not spoken also by us and the lord heard it miriam started to get puffed up pride entered her heart and there's a very very similar contrast that we can look at which is the fall of lucifer Lucifer was created a, a majestic being. He held a very, very high position um, in heaven. He was higher than all angels. But at some point in time, Lucifer felt that he was equal to Christ. He felt that he deserved honor and glory just as Christ. But he was a created being and Christ was the son of God. Lucifer wanted the power that God had, but without his character. And Miriam saw these she saw Moses as you know the beloved of the people and beloved of God and she wanted that but she did not understand what God would have prepared Moses for in conflict of the ages conflict sorry conflict and courage April 9th this is what God said about Moses it was experience gained through the years of toil and waiting in Midian the spirit of humility and long suffering there developed that prepared Moses to meet with patience the unbelief and murmuring of the people and the pride and envy of those who should have who should have been his unswervering helpers. 
Now, Miriam wanted the leadership role, but did not understand the character of her brother. God would have prepared Moses through those 40 years in the wilderness to be able to lead his people. She murmured against Moses and encouraged Aaron to do so. Miriam would have expressed to Aaron issues that she would have experienced with Moses or thoughts in her mind that she believed that they should be just as honored as Moses is with the Lord. And Aaron would have listened and give Miriam impetus on what she was doing, although he knew what she was doing was wrong. She murmured against her brother. But all part of Moses' 40 years experience, God would have endowed him with the humility to even withstand the murmuring of the persons that were closest to him. And who's supposed to be his support through this Egypt to Canaan journey? would have caused great confusion in the camp if left unchecked. Very, very similar to what happened in heaven with Lucifer. Lucifer would have encouraged one third of the angels in heaven to transgress against God. He spoke about God's character in a false sense and one third of the angels believed him. So the Lord saw this and the Lord heard Miriam and Aaron and the Bible says in Numbers 12 9 and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them he said I speak to, to prophets and visions and dreams but Moses I have spoken to face to face and and he said my servant is not so who is faithful in all mine house and he's saying you all have the audacity to speak about Moses my servant Moses and God was upset and, at, and because God was upset, God had to make a, a very verbal, a very um, visual pronouncement of his, of, of his, of the way he felt about how, how Miriam and Aaron murmured against Moses. Sometimes we are rebuked in secret. But sometimes in order for God's name to be glorified and for us to remember who is in charge, God has to rebuke us in public. And that happened to Miriam. Miriam had to be rebuked in public. But, but Ellen White says also in, in Daughters of God that now their pride humbled in the dust. So because God would have checked Miriam at that particular time, it humbled the pride that the enemy was causing to stir within her. Now, although God was quick to judgment, it was also an act of mercy. If left unchecked, who knows if Miriam would have been saved. So God used this opportunity to cut Miriam. You know, we use it to nip it in the bud. God used this opportunity to nip it in the bud so he can save Miriam and that he can save Aaron because they both had a special work to do for him. And sometimes along that journey, all these different, we, we get puffed up and we lose sight of what God had initially called us to do. So he had to put Miriam and Aaron in, in check to say, I am the one who called you and this is not your purpose, this is my purpose. And everything you all, you all do have to align with, with that. And he had to show the people as well that it was not a light thing to murmur against Moses because murmuring against Moses is also murmuring against God. Because you are saying that Moses is not the right person to be in charge and that God needs help and that God did not make the right decision. So God had to be swift with judgment, but the judgment was also an act of mercy. So, we can ask ourselves this question. Is there Miriam in you or me? Is there a defect in our character that will destroy the work God can do through us? Do we as individuals have secret sins that we cherish? Do we have pride in our heart and jealousy for a brother that is preventing us from finishing the work? Do we hold on to grudges because we love how, how how the hate feels in our heart that when we see our brethren 
all the things that would have happened comes back to our mind and we cherish and we hold on to that and we are preventing the work from being done. Do we have that defect in character, brethren? Are we holding on to these things? Knowing our roles and what God has called us to do is very important. And I see this with Miriam. We know what is currently happening in our church where women are being ordained as pastors and ministers. And we can see that Miriam was called for a purpose. She was not called to be the leader, but she was called to be a great support to her brother. And Miriam had an important role. Music is an important role in worship. Writing songs and poetry and even giving the gift of prophecy is an important role. But we as women need to understand where our roles are and understanding our roles and be able to fulfill those roles to the best of our ability instead of putting ourselves somewhere where God has not called us to. God did not call Miriam to be the leader. He called her to be a support to the leader. And that is an important role. As a manager, you always hear your staff is as good as your manager. You cannot do it alone. When a department accomplish a target, it is the department. The manager did not do it alone. And God knew that Moses could not have done it alone. He needed assistance and he brought the persons closest to him to help him accomplish that. So we as women need to understand our roles. We have very, very, very important roles. So instead of us fighting to be leaders, help us to understand what our roles are, both in the home and both in the church. Are we so caught up as leaders that we cherish power over character? The enemy is a classic example. He wanted to be like God. I want to stand like the Most High, but not once he said, I want to be like Christ. So sometimes as leaders, we are puffed up. We are so concerned about being leaders that we don't care about the character that we portray. More than Christ's power, we need to ask for his character. When we ask his, for his character, then our lives will be transformed. Then we'll be able to love our brethren. Then we'll be able to love Christ as, you know, the way he wants us to. But if we are puffed up and all we are studying is power and honor and glory for ourselves, we will never be overcomers. We see it in, in today's world with all the different men who are pushing the narrative with the pandemic. It's power, it's power they are looking for. But we have to understand that this world is temporary. And the only thing that would in, ensure that we have a place in heaven is if our character is one with Christ. We have to resemble Christ. If we do not resemble Christ, we would not make it and we will not be listed amongst the faithful. So this message was very, very eye-opening to myself because sometimes there are little things in our lives. You know, the saying says, these, the, small, the small foxes, you know, will destroy the vine. And we hold on to these little things that sometimes we think is little and we can drop at a moment's notice, but it's not. Those are the little things that will prevent us from getting into heaven. So ask yourself this question today. Is there Miriam in you or me? Allow the Holy Spirit to be your guide. I would like to leave this text with um, you this morning, Philippians 2, 3-5. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, 